He does not like the loud uh, speakers, so you just lay down. He watches me for an autoimmune disease. You'll hear more about that in a second. And he might just wander till he settles. It's uh, October of 2000, October 20th precisely, and my company, Big Words, we sell textbooks over the internet to uh, students cheaper than the bookstore, quick delivery. One of, my, one of the four co-founders uh, is actually a guy named Matt Johnson from Ottawa. And we have raised over $80 million. And I'm flying all over the world talking about the, the uh, new media economy and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like I'm on top of the world. And on the way back from speaking at the business school at St. Gallen, Switzerland, about this new topic of the new economy, I'm reading The Economist, which I love, and they're talking about how it seems like there's some froth in the market and probably all the dot-com stocks are at least double overvalued. And I distinctly remember thinking, I hope they're wrong. And they weren't. So on October 20th, 2000, a few big, burly guys that look like undercover cops with sidearms show up at our offices and unceremoniously escort everyone, including me, out of the office because our investors, who have been telling us, just grow and grow market share, we'll always be able to get you more money, just grow and grow market share, can't get us any more money. <laughs> so we've been growing, and we've been growing market share like crazy, but we have not been worrying so much about being profitable. Now, it worked for some, but it didn't work for us. So I'm now across the street from our beautiful office that used to be a meat smoking plant in downtown San Francisco on South Park. I mean, it was the coolest office in the city, I think. Well, now I'm across the street at the 21st Amendment, and Everybody and who worked for us and me were getting drunk. And it would begin the darkest chapter of my whole entire life. I almost died a few months later of an autoimmune disease, some weird version of a thing called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. What happens is you get, uh, you get lesions in all of your mucous membrane, and I mean all of your mucous membrane. It was the, one of the most painful things I've ever gone through. And then dots show up on your skin, and when those dots all connect, your skin sloughs off, you go blind and die in the burn unit. They stopped me right before that. And I remember sitting in that room in San Francisco with doctors coming from all over the place. Like, doctors drove for hours to come see me just so they could see what this looked like. And I remember thinking about my life, which is something that I, you, know, you might imagine I would do. And what I really got clear on is that my life had been very petty and small. The context for my life was something like, opportunity only knocks once, you better make this work. And what I was really up to was, I'm gonna succeed. Now, of course, I wanted to take all of my employees and co-founders with me, but man, it was about me. And that is not a great thing to look back on when you think you don't have much time left. So I promised myself that if I walked out of those doors again and got another chance, my context was gonna be really different. My context, which it still is today, was gonna be, I'm here to make a difference period, full stop. Like no matter what I'm doing, carry the garbage, wash the bottles, meet the most important people in the world, it didn't matter. I wanted to make a difference. And that's what I dedicated my life to. Now, let me tell you what that lesson meant to me in terms of being an entrepreneur real quick. And, and again, Hopefully you're applying this to your life a little bit. This is my story, but I'm telling it because I think it might matter to you. So I'll, I'll, I'll insert, by the way, the reason that I think I got that autoimmune disease that still I have issues with today, it's what Flash helps me with, is because I was not sleeping enough, 
You know when you say, how many hours of sleep did you get last night, and they say four, and then you say, oh, I only got three, and you win? That's the dumbest game you could ever win. Don't play that game, <laughs> okay? It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. There are times when you might have to sprint, but if you think you can sprint full out for as long as this is going to take, you're going to almost die or die like I did, okay? Second one is just pure stress. <laughs> you know, stress and lack of sleep seem to be the triggers for me for this thing. So I've been working a lot on, you know, getting rid of stress and sleeping enough. So you could learn that from me and not almost die. Now, a little while later, it, during the, the uh, you know, economic crisis of 2008, 9, 10, that area, all my, all my work dried up. And I looked back over my life and I was trying to figure out what can I do that, that I actually have mastery in. Because like this being an evangelist for tech companies, all of a sudden no one was calling, you know. And so I really for a while thought I would be lucky to be a greeter at Walmart. But I looked back over my life and I said, well, I've been a public speaker my whole life. Like I could train people in that and I've been training some TED speakers and some TEDx speakers, and it seems to be going pretty well, maybe I'll do that. So I went and talked to my friends who owned HR companies and my friends who uh, owned PR companies, people that would hire a speaker coach, right? And they all said, dude, you don't want to be a speaker coach. They're a dime a dozen. Like, that's a nightmare. Don't do that. So it threw me back on my heels a little bit. And I worried about it. I mean, there were times during this period that I was crying so hard. I'd just gotten married. I loved my wife. I wanted to provide a great life for her. This was not what I meant when I said that, you know. And uh, I was crying so hard, boogers were coming out, you know. Like, so if you're not ready for that as an entrepreneur, then maybe you want to get a job somewhere because <laughs> that's part of it. We just forget because we're built to forget things that hurt or are tough. That's why people can have more than one baby. Uh, so um, as I look back, I realized, okay, this is what I really think I have to offer. Now, side note, my whole life I've been an entrepreneur, been looking for ways to make money, do, does this solve a problem, do people need this, will this work? And I was always about $50,000 in debt, and I had millions of dollars worth of useless stock you may know that equation. And now I'm looking at what am I going to do in the future? That's not working, obviously. And so I decided to do this anyway. I said, I'm just going to go do this speaker coaching, executive coaching anyway, even though people say it's a nightmare and it's not going to make me any money. And uh, this is 17, 16, 15. So in 2014, two years in, I made more than I ever made in my life. In 2015, I doubled that plus, and last year in 2016, I tripled that. And next year, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make at least 1.5 million just me, my little business, doing executive coaching and speaker training. That doesn't make any money. Okay? Now, why would I tell you that? Here's why I'd tell you that. My whole life, I was focused on making money, and I made none. When I started focusing on value and bringing value and doing what I really thought I had to offer people, I made more money than I could ever imagine I would make. I think that's worth thinking about, yeah? So let me tell you quickly about luck, because that's part of what I promised I'd talk about. And then I want to give you a bonus, if you're okay with it, which is the three ways to connect with and inspire anybody, anywhere, anytime. Should we do that? Okay, so we'll do that. Quickly, I'll tell you about luck, then we'll do that. So there's a guy named Richard Wiseman. Turns out that's a really smart name for him. Who studies luck. And I'm going to bullet point this for you. But I want you to think about how it could apply in your life. Because I'm going to say you've been using luck in a way that it's not to justify some things, because I know I was. Richard Wiseman is a professor, and he gathered up this huge group of people and through kind of sneaky ways, just figured out who thought they were lucky and who thought they were unlucky. 
out of this group. And then he ran all these tests on them, and they didn't know what it was about, but it was about luck. And there's a whole bunch, there are a whole bunch of things that he's done that all end up the same way. But my favorite one is this study where he had everybody come in, and he gave them a newspaper. And he said, go through this and count how many pictures you see in this newspaper. And on about the fourth page, there was a picture with a caption that said, if you find this picture, there are 64 pictures in this newspaper. You can take this to the person running the test and tell them there's 64 and they'll give you your money, you can go. Now, the bottom line is that 100% of the people who self-described themselves as being lucky found that. 100% of the people who self-described themselves as being unlucky missed that. Kind of turns your notion of luck on its head, doesn't it? So here's the thing. I believe that luck is created. And I think what I was doing for a long time is saying, oh man, they're really lucky, which would just take the responsibility off of me. It's like, it's like when we say people have a natural talent. Do you know what natural talent at something really means? They practiced a lot. Met a guy in the Portland airport and I walked up and I mean, I play guitar, I sang in a band for a long time. I ran away with my band to LA when I was 20. And I said to him, you know, you really play well. And he says, oh, you know, it's not that I said, look, I play the guitar and I, and I know you are really good at this. You must have worked at it. And he said, you know what, thank you for saying that. People always walk by and they just say things like, oh, you have a gift. <laughs> Actually, I just practiced a lot. Okay, really fast. Now, you gotta know the rules to break them. I'm gonna do this faster than I should, but I wanna keep us on time. Way to inspire people, number one. Pe Les Brown told me, you, people don't connect with your successes, they connect with your messes. Your message is in your mess. It's what I talked about this whole time, my mess. If you can tell people what you screwed up and what you learned out of it, they will connect with you and care much more about your successes. Now, sometimes you have to talk about your successes. So Craig Valentine told me, John, don't make yourself special, make the process special. All those things that you did really well, figure out the process. Did you work hard? Did you practice? Did you get a good coach and be coachable? What was it that had you succeed? When you tell people what, what, what it was that had you succeed, they're not stuck thinking that you're high on yourself. They actually get a really useful thing they can take with them. Good so far? Ready for the last one? Okay, good. So here's the last one from Nancy Duarte, who does a lot of the beautiful slides and, and graphics for uh, TED speakers. She says, don't be the hero of your own speech. Make the audience the hero. Don't be Luke, be Yoda. So let's just get a visual on this, okay? Let's just say that I'm not going to be Luke, but rather I'm going to be Yoda. Let's see what it would look like if Luke, we're going to give a talk, okay? This is Luke. You ready? Are you ready? Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. Okay, not bad, you know, I didn't lose control of the thing or leave a burn mark on the stage. But let's try it again, and instead of being Luke, let's be Yoda this time, okay? It would be a little different. This is Yoda now. This is an elegant weapon from a more civilized time. And if you practice and use the force, you could change the destiny of the galaxy. And the force is strong with you. <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right, come on. Should we just stay down here? Okay, here we go. 
Bring it on. Wah! Come on, ha, 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 ha. Come get me, come on. Get serious about this, okay. It's okay, you don't have to not hit me. Come, come. All right, ah, go. Ah! Awesome, well done, let's give her a hand. Very well done, thank you, Alex. All right, so if you practice and you use the force, you could change the destiny of the galaxy. Thank you. Thank you. Go get them. I love what you do. Thank you for giving your life to making the world a better place. I love you. Thank you. Come on, Flash. Let's go, puppy.